So we have to be able to simplify thirds. You remember that thirds are irrational numbers. That is, the decimal part goes on and on without forming a repeating pattern or stopping, represented with a radical sign. To simplify them, we use factors of the number under the radical that are square numbers. So our square numbers, 4, because it's 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 16, 25, 36. We're looking for factors that are square numbers. Don't forget 100. People forget it a lot. So we look at um, the square root of 48, and we are using the rule that says the root of a product is the same as the roots of each factor multiplied together. So that's the rule that we're using. So 4 would be a square factor of 48, but we would look for the biggest square factor we've got. 16 also goes into 48. You have to show you're working. That is root 16 times 3, or we could have written that's the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. We can show both lines. One is enough. You can't just go straight to the answer because you can do that on your calculator and I don't know that you've got it. The reason, now you always put your square, perfect square number first, because then the square root of 16, which is why we went for these square numbers, is 4. 4 times root 3, we just write 4 root 3. So for the square root of 90, we look at our square uh, numbers. You can see that that's the square root of 9 times the square root of 10. The square root of 9 is 3, so I've got 3 root 10. You can check that on your green calculators, which is a good idea. But you do have to show me working. It's also a good idea to double check what's left under the radical as your third to make sure you can't get another square factor of that. Sometimes we haven't simplified fully. To add and subtract, we need like thirds. That is, it's got the same number under the radical. So 4 root 3 and 5 root 3 are like thirds. And you can think of the number out the front as the coefficient. And the number under the radical is like your x or your y. So it works exactly like algebra would. So these don't look like they're like thirds. But you can see that we would be able to simplify both of them. So you're looking for a square factor of 125. That's 25. So this is 2 times root 25 times root 3. And 45. It's not root 3. What have I done wrong? 25 times what gives me 125? This is 5. I'm sorry. Minus 3 times 45. That's got root 9 times root 5. So our square, power, a square product factor, root of 25 is 5. So this is 2 times 5. I've got 10 root 5 minus this root 9 is 3, so it's 3 times 3, 9 root 5. Don't forget my equal signs. 10 root 5 minus 9 root 5. Same as algebra, just subtract your coefficients. That's just 1 root 5 or root 5. So you need like thirds. It works the same way as algebra. In the same way, multiplying and dividing, uh, we did the multiplication rule up here. So you can work this either way. If I've got a third times a third, you can just combine that multiplication under one radical sign. If I'm dividing, if I've got a third divided by a third, same thing. I can combine that under one radical, or I can split it into separate thirds, whichever one makes it easier. So here, root 40 divided by root 8 
Well, that's the square root of 40 divided by 8. So I've got the square root of 5. 8. Root 5 times root 20. Combine it under one root sign. That's the square root of 100, which in this case is 10. So if you just get to a third, that is, it would be an irrational number, leave it as a third. If it's not a third, if your square root would get your whole number, evaluate it. We need to be able to manage binomial products with thirds. and we'll go with brackets squared. Remember, if you've got squared brackets with a sum or a difference inside them, you're going to need FOIL. Write two copies of the brackets. So you remember FOIL, first outside, inside, last. First term times the first term. And notice that we really need to be a little bit clever with our squaring a root. When you're multiplying, the coefficient times the coefficient, just like you would with algebra, 2 times 2 is 4. Then times root 3 times root 3. Now what's root 3 times root 3? Just 3. So this is 2 times 2 times 3. So that is 4 times 3, which is 12. Here though, this is 2 root 3 times negative root 2 minus 2 times, so it's 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Root 3 times root 2 is root 6. Minus root 2 times 2 root 3 minus 2 root 6. Then negative root 2 times negative root 2 plus 2. So use that factor, that, that aspect that when it's root 2 times root 2, you just get the base of 2. Simplify. 12 minus 2 root 6 minus 2 root 6 plus 2. 12 plus 2 is 14. Take away 4 root 6. So we simplify the same way we would as algebra.